I believe I'm live. Hi, everybody. Welcome again from my sunroom. Soon, very soon, we'll be able to have all of our, uh, everything back to, I don't want to say normal. You know, seeing people face to face, even if it's from a distance, we'll have classes again soon. And maybe we can even do it outside when it gets really nice out. So wine and yoga. Tonight, I'm drinking sangria and I'm wearing my new shirt. I got myself a shirt. Oh, well, this one says the Friday one, but that's okay. It's all good. So as you prepare for our practice, we try to incorporate having some fun, um, doing a traditional class, take a break whenever you want to. Of course, I can't see you. So if you're actually just sitting in a chair drinking wine, it's all good. Don't mind it all. But if you are following along for a real yoga class, we'll get started. So find yourself a comfortable position, whether you have your legs stretched out or you have them crossed like my own, it doesn't matter. Either way, you're going to think about your posture. And that would be having those shoulders broad and relaxed and the top of the head straight up to the sky. Closing your eyes. Hopefully you're someplace where you won't be distracted too much by significant others or children. Pets, sometimes okay. They crawl into your lap. Just begin to focus on how your body feels. We've had some days behind us that had some good weather for gardening. Perhaps you're feeling that in the shoulders or the hips or the legs. Maybe you're one of those bodies that feels when rainy weather is coming. And just letting yourself relax. Lie on the ground. And we begin to slow our breath down. Make each one a little bit more deliberate than the last. Maybe bringing more focus to each breath now. I want you to feel it enter your nose. And pay attention to all the characteristics. So your breath will have a texture to it. There'll be a temperature. Maybe you have fragrances from things that might be being prepared dinner-wise. Then dealing with the mechanics of your breath. As I mentioned earlier, slowing it down. Let the belly begin to fill up. Bringing that breath up higher and higher so the whole torso is involved and expands. Once you get to the very peak or the top of your inhale breath, you're going to pause. Possibly directing it to areas that you found when you went through your body's inventory that need that spaciousness. Starting the exhale, we start opposite direction, so high to the chest. Lastly, the bottom portion of your pelvis will empty out. There too, you have a pause. And you start the process over again. Notice the subtle changes in your bodies already. just by focusing on the breath. And this focused breathing will help clear your mind as well. And that's where we're going next. 
the three parts of our grounding, the body, the breathing, and what's going on in your mind, weeding out the unnecessary thoughts, seeing how your emotional well-being is, and your energy level. As you tap into how you're doing energetically and emotionally, don't stress out about it. it. Just is what it is. It's going to change from moment to moment, day to day, situation to situation. I'm going to take a couple more deep breaths. And a slow, gentle warm up. We'll start with the inhale breath again. And upon the exhale, let's bring our heads down. Give length to the back of the neck. Tuck the chin in closer towards your throat. Still keep those shoulders back. They may have a tendency to want to round themselves forward. They're there a lot. Let's think about the posture still. And we'll bring faces to neutral. And we'll think about the top of the head, the crown, reaching more to the sky. And then we'll lift our faces to the sun. Depending on where you're located, maybe it's just sky. Maybe the sun is fading a little bit more and more behind the clouds, behind trees, behind buildings. Let your jaw slacken. Relax the eyebrows, especially the crease, that frown line or concentration line. Fill up the throat with your inhale and exhale breath like you're going on a mirror. Then we level out that gaze. So a little key here, if you are uh, sitting cross-legged, at some point in time, switch those legs around. We have habits in our bodies, natural patterns, so we want to break those patterns up. And then from this point, we're going to turn over our shoulder rotation. Doesn't matter which way you go, we'll go both directions eventually. And we'll pass through our midline, the centers of our body, to the other side rotation. Be an observer. How is this side in comparison to the other? And we'll come back to our centers. Realign our posture in case we have slouched. And then a nice emphasis on those shoulders moving away from the ears and down. Because we're going to go lateral flexion. So we want space created. And that is tipping the head, ear towards shoulder. If you've had a stressful day, take that opposite hand and press that palm away from your body down toward the ground. Like you're trying to create one long, clean slope from the ear down to the fingertips. Just 
still focusing on the quality of your inhale, exhale breath. And we're back up to the sky. We're going to pause a little bit, feel one side to the other. And you can tip opposite direction. And another option, instead of having that palm pushed away to the ground, the direction that you have your head tipped, if you take your fingers, place it on your side of your skull there, and a little opposing pressure. So slightly pressing into the head, head slightly pressing into the fingers. So everything we do with our postures is always with intention. So it's never forceful. You should never feel pain. And we'll move the top of the head back up to the sky and give those shoulders some nice big rounds. We're gonna go each direction. You can change that whenever you like. So I'm gonna have a little intermission and sip my wine. You're welcome to do that too. You can do that anytime you want, like I mentioned earlier. I've added a couple slices of lime to my sangria, it really hits the spot. Mm -mm -mm. All right, we're gonna go on to core next. So that is constructive rest pose where I like to start. And that's feet on the ground, knees bent, and take your time as you roll down keeping your spine connected as long as possible so you don't just flop down. Once you get back down to the ground, you can adjust those feet so they're more comfortable distance from your pelvis. I like to shimmy my pelvis around a little bit as well as my shoulders. That just gets me all grounded, spread out with body parts. Take a couple deep breaths. Feel your new posture on the ground. Then we're gonna take that pelvis, we're gonna pull it in and down towards your low ribs. Now it really is a pulling action. So think about your feet and your thighs and your bottoms being soft. And then you go the other direction with your pelvis toward the thighs. And then pelvis rocks back down towards your low ribs. And then opposite direction. We're gonna go back and forth just like this a few more times. Use your breath for the movement, matching as you inhale and exhale with tilting, rocking. Some type, some people like that word better than tilt. Whatever works for you. Now, the next time that you have your hips and ribs connected, I want you to keep them there. We're gonna take a leg and cross it over the other leg. Then you can scoot that foot back to midline. So you have your legs crossed. And we're gonna do the same thing with our arms. We're gonna stack one on top of the other and give them across. So the fingertips are gonna to go toward the top or crown of your head. And then we're going to pull both of those body parts together, elbows toward knees, because it's a clamshell. So we're gonna roll up, squeezing those body parts together. And then we're gonna open up. Now the trick when you open up is to keep the hips and ribs connected to each other. Fingers go back toward the ground. And then roll on up, give yourself a squeeze. And then we'll open back up nice and slow, breathing as you go. And up we go. So you can do this at your own pace. Just remember to keep everything connected. Remember to breathe. Generate some heat through our midsection. If you've practiced with me before, you know that I always incorporate core. I'm a firm believer that without a strong core, extremities cannot be strong. You'll find that your balance improves with strong cores. 
Let me do a couple more. If you recognize the arms and the legs, if we were standing, this would be part of our eagle pose, which we're gonna do later tonight. All right, when you find yourself opened up, you can unstack the legs and the arms and stretch out, careful for your beverages or anything obstacle-wise, in to morning stretch. This will give your back a little ch chance to bump up the sky a little bit, point the toes, Reach through the fingertips. Fill up the entire torso again with your breath. Then we'll keep one leg down on the ground. We're gonna pull the other leg, knee into our chest and give that a hug. You can give your foot a nice twirl. Make sure you go both directions if you haven't changed already. And I'm going to pull the other leg in, straighten that opposite leg down to the ground. Knee to chest for a hug and the twirl. Round, round. So be proud of me. I have painted my toenails. I'm all set for sandal weather. Now we just need the weather. I hear it's supposed to be nice next week. Yay! Couple more times, round around, changing direction. And then we'll take the other knee into the chest, a little rock from side to side. And you bring yourself to tabletop, which is all fours, hands and knees. So you'll need space in front and behind you for extension of arm and leg. I just realized I'm color coordinated with my mats tonight too. Wow. Good. All right. So tabletop, we have hands under shoulders, hips, knees are lined up. Just like we did in that constructive rest pose, we have a little bit of a kiss to hips and ribs. Crown of the head is long, tailbone, sit bones long behind us. We're just going to pause right here. Good weight bearing for us ladies, building bone density, muscle mass, using our own body weight. I'm going to take another deep breath. And one arm in front, opposite leg in back for extension. We're going to pause here. If you have a desk job and are seated at that throughout the day, this is a good way to give your body a break. Our bodies are in flexion an awful lot. This is extension, working those opposite muscle groups. I'm gonna take another deep breath here. All right, we're gonna replace the hand down. That back leg is still where it's at. We're gonna bend at the knee. Take the sole of your foot and press it directly up to the sky. And then back down to your neutral position. And then pump it up to the sky. And back to neutral, warming up the back of the leg and hip flexor. Up we go, back down, two more, press up, back to neutral, and last one, press up, and back to neutral. Straighten it all the way out, put your toes, connect to the ground, and really push that heel back behind you. Now you're gonna do this with squeezing the quadricep muscle, muscle on top of the thigh. So you're not hyperextending or locking that knee. Just giving that leg a nice long stretch. Now we can place it back down, tabletop. We'll be doing the other side. Opposite arm, opposite leg. Everything energy-wise through the fingers, through the toes. Check with your head too, that you haven't let it drop down with gravity. Aligning everything up 
even weight bearing on the hand and the knee so you're not sway from one side to the other. You know that we measure everything in breath and yoga. So we're going to take another deep inhale. Upon the exhale, you can place that hand back down. Keep your weight bearing evenly. Bend at the knee. And then that sole of foot press to the sky. And back to neutral. If you're feeling any hinging sensation in that low back, really trying to Extend your sits bones and your tailbone away from that low back. That means that the hips and ribs have to come together a little bit more. Keep pushing up this guy. One more. And then back to a neutral position. Extend. Toes down to the ground. Press with the heel. Nice, long length, stretch that leg out. And then we'll match knee to knee. Toes come underneath. Arms are a little farther forward. And then bottom's gonna sit back and then come forward. So if you're on a really hard surface, the more you push into your toes, the more you can take the pressure off the knees as we rock forward and back. I'm gonna make it a little more dramatic as you're rocking back and rocking forward, come forward even more. Start to get into the hip flexors even deeper. Last one. When your hips are back, you can stay right there with the tops of the feet back on the ground. Sit all the way back in child pose. You can stack hands if your head doesn't come down to the ground on its own, but it really should rest on something. I'm going to take another deep breath here. And then we're going to move our bodies forward. And lucky for me, maybe lucky for you, I can reach my line. Oh, that's good stuff. All right. So we are going to take our elbows right underneath our shoulders. It's called Sphinx Pose. Your forearms are leaning right out from those elbows. And instead of having your shoulders rocked forward, I'm going to move them back and really think about projecting your chest forward. Now, as you work your way through your spine, once you get to your pelvis, Push the pelvis into the ground, move tailbone and the bony parts, we call them the sits bones, towards your heels. As you move through those leg bones, lengthen them long, get to the tops of the feet, and a nice push into the tops of the feet, the mat. Again, nice extension here. This would be a nice one to have your children do if you have been homeschooling and they've been homeschooling on tablets or computers of any sorts for long periods of time. I'll take another deep breath. And move your elbows out of the way. Come all the way down. Let your arms rest and your cheek on the ground. Taking a couple deep breaths. And then turn the cheek the other direction. And you 
to bring your body back to neutral and stack your hands so your chin can rest. We're gonna take our legs out wide. And then we're gonna bend at the knees and windshield wiper both legs. So it doesn't matter how you decided to go with those legs, if they were open and then crisscross or back and forth, you can mix it up if you want. Really feel how your hips move side to side. You might even get into the low back a little bit with back and forth motion. And then we'll bring our legs back to stillness and move those knees back in. Let your legs be long behind you. Give yourself a prop. And take the toes underneath. You might have to adjust yourself on your mat like I did. Instead of having the arms right underneath the shoulders, let's go, go a little bit ahead of yourself. And then the bottoms can go back and we'll move ourselves up to downward facing dog. Once you're here, go ahead and let those feet move up and down and up and down. So the heels can touch. Getting into the calves, the kiwis. Plus, that's a nice way to warm up the back of the legs, having a bend to the knees, so we don't pull too much. Now, if you're still in motion, go ahead and be stationary. Really allow your shoulders to sink in a little bit more to the ground. A little more height to the pelvis, a little more reach through the heels. We'll take another breath. And body's going to shift forward. We're ending up in a plank here. So it's like in tabletop, we don't want our head to drop down. Lift those shoulders away from the ground. Hips and ribs have their little tuck into each other. If you decide to put your knees down, that's absolutely fine. You still have that core engagement. We'll take another breath. And the hips are going to lift back to our downward facing dog just for a breath. Look up to between the hands. And step on up, top of the mat, softness to the knees. Take your time. We're gonna roll up to mountain pose. Your head will be the last thing that comes up. Get situated here with your eyes closed. Eyes can open. We're going to take a deep breath. Skyward with the arms. And then exhale down to the ground. Open up part way. And exhale all the way down. Take a leg and step it back. Bring the arms up to the sky. High lunge. I'm going to take a nice deep breath here. And then exhale back down to the ground. Step forward into your fold. Open up to a part way. And exhale down, switch the leg. Nice long runner's lunge. Get grounded, so hips and ribs have a connection. Strengthening our core so we can come up using balance. High lunge. Take another breath. Exhale, arms down to the ground. Step that leg back for downward facing dog. Go 
bring your body weight forward to our plank. And we're gonna lower our bodies all the way down. Knees can come down first if you want. Otherwise, let your whole body lower down. Straighten those legs and toes behind you. And then give your upper body a lift away from the ground. Then we come back down. We're gonna move back into that plank position. And back to our downward facing dog. Look up to between the hands and make your way up. Open up to a part way. Let our blood pressure adjust. Fold back down and then come up. Bring your arms along. We're gonna lean those arms right to the sky as we come down into a chair position. You will take another deep breath. And back up to the sky. Exhale down to the ground. Open up part way. Exhale, choose a leg to step back to runner's lunge. This time bring that knee and make it connect to the ground. We're gonna bring our arms to the sky. And then to the heart. We're gonna cross over to that thigh Letting the thigh and the arm make a connection to a nice twist. Checking out the scenery, whatever that is for you. Outside my windows, I have a beautiful row of pine trees. After this rain, things have really greened up. We'll take another breath. And back to our centers. We'll place our hands down on the ground. Extend the back leg, step forward into your fold. You have that opening part way and exhale back down. Come all the way up and bring the arms with, leave them to the sky and then sit back in chair. Lots of power in our legs. No death grip with the toes. Take it back up to the sky. Exhale down the ground. Open up to our part way. We're gonna switch our legs. Stepping back. Nice long stride. Runner's lunge. Then bring the knee to connect. Arms to the sky. Hands come in front of the heart. And then rotation, connecting thigh and outside of arm. Nice deep breath. Don't force anything. Just feel the spine begin to warm up, limber up. Taking some breath to the sticky spots. And then back to our centers. Lift up the back leg, step back to our downward facing dog. We'll take another breath here. Bodies are gonna come forward to that plank position. We're gonna lower everything down as we did before. Lengthen those legs, move the shoulders away from the ears, and then peeling off that upper body away from the ground. And we'll take it back down. We're going to push everything back to child pose and take some pauses here. Deep inhale, exhale breaths. The knees can open up wide if you want them to. Check out your energy level, if it's changed or shifted at all. We'll take another deep breath. Toes are gonna to come underneath and back up downward facing dog. Look to the top of your mat, make your way up. 
Come open to that part way and fold back down. All the way up. Bring the arms along. And into our chair. Hands to the heart. Another variation for our twist. So as you come into the twist to this position, really make sure that your knees stay put. So if you're at the side angle, if a knee pops forward in your twist, make sure it comes back. It's hard to see full face on. In chair, hands here at the heart, rotation through the body. And if you want to squat down a little bit further, that's fine to let elbow and knee connect. Otherwise, upright, nice twist, knees are level with each other. I'll take a couple more deep breaths. Back to our center. Other side, your legs are probably saying, wow, waking up, huh? That's a good thing. Get all those muscle groups warm. Keeping us independent as long as possible. Take another breath. And back to our centers. One more inhale here. And all the way up to the sky. Arms to your sides. I'm going to step back enough that you can see everything that's going on. So we have our feet back to mountain pose position. We're going to take a deep breath, arms to the sky. We're going to take a hold of a wrist. So I'm not going to say left or right because we'll do both sides. As you take a hold of that wrist, give it a little bit of traction. So lifting it upward. Make sure you're not pulling your shoulder forward, though. Keep it alongside your ear or even back. And then we're going to do a side body bend. Now, as you just give a little bit of traction or pull to that arm, begin to keep pushing that hip outward. And notice if your body is bending forward or back. Try and keep everything in alignment. Nice, clean line. Feel each rib, getting some space. I'll take another breath. And back up to the sky. We'll switch sides. So gently find the wrist, give a little traction. Make sure the shoulder doesn't pull forward. And then pressing that hip out. Deep breath. It's harder to fill up your whole center in positions like this. It takes more thought. And take one more deep inhale. And back up. Separate the arms and come to a gentle forward fold. Let your head soften, maybe shake it out, yes and no. Hinging at the hip creases so the belly finds its way closer to the thighs first. And then let the spine lengthen as it will. We'll have another breath. And then give a softness to the knees as you roll up. So I mentioned that we were earlier when we warmed up our core, we had eagle body parts, arms and legs. We're gonna do that here standing. After a little intermission, of course. What's the point in pouring it if you're not gonna drink it, right? All right, so getting into our eagle pose. We'll start with feet, about the same distance as your hips. And it's easier if you have a little bend in knees, hips, and ankles, flexion. So that's what we're gonna start with, a little bend. 
Take one leg or the other, cross it over on top. Now your choice. Toes can stay in contact with the ground. You can have them lifted. If you are really into it tonight, go ahead and wrap that leg all the way around. And you're gonna do the same thing with the arms. Gonna take one on top of the other. You can either give yourself a hug. You can place the arms straight to the sky. I'm gonna move my head to the side so you can see. Or if you have the range of motion, wrap them around again. What you want to avoid is crunching hands and fingers, keep energy flowing straight to the sky. I'm actually gonna turn my body a little bit to the side. Give all that flexion, give that wrap around, another wrap around, and pause right here. Hips and ribs are connected with each other, core strength. We warmed up our quadricep muscles with our chairs. And maybe balance just never is your thing, and that's okay. If it's not, keep a toe connected to the ground. Nothing ever has to be so challenging that you aren't getting something out of the pose. I'll take another deep breath. And then we'll come up nice and tall. Unwrap those arms. That kind of helps you just move around a little bit. Shake off the legs. All right, I'm gonna turn the other side just slightly. And then we have our bend for the other side. Stacking the leg over. Now this side might be really different than the other side. Honor that. So if it wants to have toes connected, let it do it. Remember our bodies have habits. So as you cross over, you will notice right off the bat if you did the other side. So making sure you get to the other side Wrapping those arms either in a hug or back of the hand, back of the hand, or a full wrap. I'm going to take another deep breath here. Unwrapping the arms, go ahead and out gently as you go in, shake it out. And we'll come back to our mountain pose. Take a deep breath, arms skyward. Exhale to the ground. Open up to our part way and exhale back down. Open up part way. Exhale back down. Back to our part way. And exhale back down. Where this time you can walk the hands and the feet back to downward facing dog. We'll take a deep breath here. Bodies are going to come forward to our plank. And we'll bring the knees down. Move shoulders away from the ears. Engage hips towards your ribs for core stability. I'm gonna take another deep breath. And then lift the knees off, back to long leg plank. Take a deep breath. Exhale, knees can make their connection. I'm gonna turn to the side for a different view. Take a deep breath and extend those legs. So knee plank is very different than coming to tabletop. Take another deep breath and exhale, knees down. Connect those hips and ribs, inhale breath. Last one, knees lift off, nice long legs. And connect the knees and a child pose. Remember, you can always open up those knees, like I mentioned earlier. Bodies will fit down in between that space. Make sure your hands either stack or something so your head can fit all the way down onto the ground.
from your child pose position. If you have your hands stacked, go ahead and reach those arms out in front and then walk them over to one side or the other. It's possible that your heads will no longer touch on the ground as you walk the hands and that's fine. Walking them back to the front, your center, and then walking them to the other side. And back up. Making that journey upwards, nice and slow. We'll take the legs out to the front in our staff pose. We'll pause right here for a moment. And we'll isolate each leg a little bit more. We're going to take our leg and give it a bend. Bring that foot in close to your pelvis and then let that leg open as a whole unit so you're not just torquing the knee or rolling at the ankle. So the sole of your foot is going to come as close to it can to your pelvis connecting with your thigh. That opposite stretched out leg's job is to press firmly down and your foot does have a little bit of flex to it. We'll take our arms upward, skywise. We're gonna keep our body nice and long. And then connect where you can connect. So your hands certainly do not have to find the foot. Maybe it's the shin, up by the thigh, doesn't matter where. Just keep projecting that body long over that leg. Let your head relax. Taking your breath more and more to the back side of your body. Notice what's going on in the back of the leg. Muscles in your bottoms, glute muscles. We'll take another breath. And slowly bodies will begin to open up. So we're gonna have one leg bent. We're gonna bend the other knee. We're gonna scoot to the one that's closest to the pelvis out a little bit. And you can brace yourself and then let those knees tip side to side. One more each direction, side to side. And then straighten out those legs. Staff pose, Don Dawson. And we'll do the other side. It's the bend, foot position close as it can. Let it open up through the hip. Again, you might notice more range in one side than the other. It's all okay. Take a deep breath, arms to the sky. And hip flexor is where we start. Keep that body long. And then when you meet your range, let your arms relax. Let your head relax. Move that breath to the back side of your body. And notice what's different from this side to the other. Two more deep inhale, exhale breaths. We'll have our 
our gentle opening up. We'll keep that back knee where it's at, bending the other leg, hands back behind you, and then again, a little side to side movement with those knees. Nice to work out the kinks, moving our bodies in different directions. Typically we go forward, 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 forward all the time, unless you're conscious about it. Seldom do we go side to side or backwards. One more time each direction. And then we're gonna find ourselves in reverse tabletop. So I'm gonna turn my body a little bit here. So my feet are gonna be the same distance as my hips, knees are bent. I'm gonna take my hands behind me, just about underneath where the shoulders would be. Fingertips are gonna be facing the same direction as the toes, so towards your bottoms. And move our shoulders away. Give a nice tuck to hips and ribs. Push into the feet and lift the pelvis up. Reverse tabletop. Now, if you remember in gym class, or being a youngster like myself a long, 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 long time ago, we'd be walking around like this in the crab walk. So you can let your body go forward and backward a little bit. You can always adjust those hands if they feel like they're too close or too far away. They should be underneath the shoulders, though. Evenly. Distribute the weight on the feet. We'll take another deep breath. And bring the bones back down to the ground. You can give your knees a hug. So we're gonna do that a couple more times. It'll give you a chance to make any other little adjustments to your body that you have to. All right, setting ourselves up. So maybe you felt that your hands need to be a little more away from the body or a little closer to the body or same with the feet, whatever it is. Get yourself ready, ground those feet. Lift the hips up. It's nice to tell yourself too that the hips don't weigh a thing. They're there to support us nice and strong. You decide how you want your head. If you want to go back a little bit, that's fine. Just always be really cautious with your necks. Find to have the chins tucked or somewhere in between. We'll take another breath. And lower down gently. Give those knees the hug. And last one, getting yourself set up. Connect all those body parts that you know are necessary. Hips go up. And steady the breath. I'm going to be here for a couple more breaths. If you feel like being fancy schmancy tonight, go ahead and take a leg and lift up the sky. Set that leg back down, only if obviously you did lift it. And switch sides. And notice this change from one side to the other. And back down. Take a deep breath. And lower bodies all the way down and give the knees the hug. Oh, we're going to take a couple moments and chill out. So you can roll down. I'm going to continue just sitting upright so you hear my voice. But you can roll down to constructive rest pose, which was those knees bent, feet on the ground. And if that's not comfortable enough, go ahead and go 
all the way into Shavasana corpse pose. Where the legs straighten out, you let them roll open. Arms will be by your sides and they also roll open as well. So the palms will be facing the sky. And let your body surrender to the ground. Whether you're in constructive rest pose, corpse pose, or maybe you opted just to sit up as I am. Closing your eyes. As you're surrendering to the ground. This is a place where we've honored our bodies. We're grateful for each breath. It's also the place where we're always in the moment. We haven't thought about yesterday. We really don't need to think about tomorrow. Just the here and the now. The safety of your mat. your own space, your own breath. And kind of in awe sometimes of what our bodies are capable of. They're built to survive. And you can move around a little bit, wiggle those fingers and toes, deepen your breath. Queen, where you're at in your space. And when you're ready, you can sit back up and find your beverage if you still have one. You can fake it. If you have something to drink still, take it in both hands. Mine's cold and damp from the ice cubes, sweating. And it smells really good. I can smell the lime. And just take it all in. And we raise a toast. And bring it back in for a namaste, a good sip. And I thank you all for joining me tonight. Have a great rest of the week and weekend, and we'll see you soon. Namaste.